There you go. All right. Well, what if we Cigars of Hour podcast take fifty? Take fifty four. That looks good. That looks fine. Sit the fuck down. After four hours and 37 minutes, but yeah, it only yeah, looked yeah. like it was two seconds. Here we long. are again. See, Here. the thing is, when you have a new setup, you got to readjust the anguage of everything. <laughs> you probably shouldn't talk that fucking close. Uh. All right, so this is the Raider. Yeah, we're smoking the Raider. Really? It's the Sumatra. Mm. Wrapper with a Dominican, mm. Nicaraguan, and Peruvian blend as a filler. <laughs> Very good. Cut. Yeah. Let me tell you something. So, when is someone worth a shit going to come on our podcast? Whenever they agree to agree with our schedule. Yeah, that is a. Uh, very disagreeable thing. Is it? Yeah, that bright ass fucking light, I can't even see the screen. So Yeah, we do have the so we went to the uh we went to a certain police department, their helipad, and we stole the spotlight off their helicopter. Mm -hmm. That's where we're using the light this uh, up. Believe it or not, it's got a lot of red in it. I was gonna come up with a joke, but uh Yeah, just shut up. Anyway, split your shit. You're not going to like yours. I'm letting you. How sweet of you. Yeah. So let me just say something real quick. The golf tournament. Yeah. Was Monday. Yes, it was. Good job. All right. Listen here, shithead. <laughs> <laughs> the golf tournament was Monday. Mm-hmm. And I unfortunately didn't get to go. It's all right. It was still successful, even without you there. Take that however you want. Hmm. Like that like I did. It's really nice. I'm sorry, what? I consistently toast the end of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember like uh, yeah, House of Cigars used to do? Yeah, absolutely. Good try. And then when you're done toasting it, blow out and blow all that smoke out and then light it. Mm -hmm. Try that. All right. I haven't, done, I haven't seen that done in a long time. Yeah. Actually lit, tastes good. It's delicious. It's incredible. This so, is a great cigar. It is fantastic. Man. So a little bit about the name, the Raider. So we named it after the Marine Corps Raiders mm. to show our respect and honor. We, we want to honor them. So good name. Hang on. Yeah. Go on. Go on. So my phone this, restarted. This me. past uh, Monday, October 17th, um, I was present at the Mesquite Police Association Golf Tournament, which was a fantastic event. Uh, we donated quite a few cigars to a lot of people. And uh, this, uh, it was a great time, met some really good people. They're really nice, uh, utmost respect from the Mesquite Police Department, a uh, bunch of stand-up guys and, and gals. Yeah. Yeah, Fantastic absolutely. people. It's been a rough week for uh, law enforcement too. Yes, it has. Yeah. Very rough week. Yeah, just locally here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. We'll say that, uh, Families have our deepest condolences. Absolutely, and, uh, we're trying, um, trying the best we can on uh, raising funds. Yeah, raising funds and everything. So, yes, we're we're trying the best we can. We got a, uh, we got a few cells going, but we're we're trying as hard as we can to get more. Yeah, but you know, one day we'll see where we can actually do a lot. Absolutely, and we're we're still growing. We're just a year old as a company, and. Uh, it just takes time. We'll grow with time. But one thing that did grow was this podcast, as you notice the background behind us. Yeah. You got that hat. Yeah, I got a hat. And uh, 
I which is available on the website. Right? It is available on the website. Mm. The trucker hat. Yes. This one is too. And one of our new T-shirts is now available on the website. I like that. Yeah, that's a cool shirt. So here we are, new and improved, ready to be just as horrible as we originally were. Yes. So, what we got coming up? We got uh, November 9th is our next event. Uh, it's El Dorado Fine Cigars. We will be there. When is, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. When is uh, Nacogdoches, Tobacco-doches? Uh This is tomorrow. I uh, won't be able to make it. Oh, you're not going? No, I won't be able to make it. Well, that would have been fun. Mm-hmm. I got some uh, important matters I need to stay in town for. Mm. So it's people to kill. Oh, sorry, we'll edit that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and call the lawyer again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, me again. That, that girl at that restaurant. <laughs> that was there. funny. Jesus. That was funny. Well, I shot him in the head. And, and uh, she just like stopped. the waitress just stopped dead in her tracks just with the most shocked and questioned face. But it's okay. Yeah. I'm sure she hears all kinds of stupid shit in there. Fuck all the cops. It's all good. None of them came after us. Oh, oh yeah, you got this sticker. I yes. So that. I have a new sticker to show support. To, yeah, too, actually. Yeah, Mesquite Police Department. And also one of their fallen officers. We have his badge, with badge number, to show respect and honor him everywhere we go. Uh, unfortunately, he was uh, killed in the line of duty last year. So, right that was last December, right? Last December, just before Christmas. So, uh, very unfortunate deal, but we will always show respect and we will always. Honor him. So, yeah. yeah. Recently, it was a Dallas officer and a mm-hmm. Carrollton officer. Yeah, uh, just, just this week. Yeah. It's, it's been a rough week. It's insane. Yeah. But uh, we'll do what we can to help the family, and uh, we're, we will always support both the Dallas Police Department and the Carrollton Police Department. And we'll see what we can do to help them. Yep. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, we got the event November 9th, mm-hmm. uh, El Dorado Fine Cigars. Uh, we got some new cigars coming in at the end of this month. Uh, it's like we mentioned last week. It'll be the, the original testers for the one-year blend. Um, we're decided to Pretty work, good. get some more of them made, and uh, they're on their way here. They would have been here sooner, but the hurricanes kind of screwed it up. Yeah, we had this guy on a boat with a paddle. Yeah. And... Uh, he calls us like right out in the middle of the Gulf and uh, I don't know. We got like 10 seconds of audio and then just went away. We haven't heard from him since. Yeah. Lost the shipment though. Rest in peace to the cigars. Absolutely. And uh, no insurance claims. Damn it. You're pretty fucked up. You know that? I was just thinking he shouldn't be out in the middle of the fucking ocean. ocean in a John boat. <laughs> yeah, with a, a boat with a paddle. Oh, well. So, builds character. We're uh, going to be talking to some more cigar shops this fall, uh, trying to spread our wonderful personalities <laughs> all over. And uh, I really felt like that was going to go into a different word, but yeah, it was. But I decided to stop. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're going to visit uh, some more cigar shops this fall. We're going to try and do something uh, in the Fort Worth area. Uh, we're going to venture out west a little bit, maybe Fort Worth. Uh, we're working on a shop in Sherman. It'll be opening up soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to venture out, like I said, far, far west, uh, west of Fort Worth. We're going to work our way over there and uh, see if we can grow to uh, 10 shops by the time spring comes around next year. Yeah, it'll be really good. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Spread the cult. The cigars of Valor cult. Yeah. If you would like to join the cult, please bring an AR-15 to donate, 700 rounds of ammunition, drop it off at our local office, 
And uh, we'd be glad to have you enter the cold. You also get on the video for three seconds. Three. Three seconds. So. It's a hell of a deal. Can't beat it. No less than 700 rounds of ammo. I don't even know what we need it for, but we just go to the range or something. There we go. So last week, speaking of that, I, I mentioned how we were open to sponsors, especially uh, ammunition companies. Yeah. I was serious about that. <laughs> <laughs> soon. Uh, Donate. I mean, sponsor us soon. Yeah. We will we need uh, to go to the range. Make it worth your while. You know, I've actually been listening to, are you stuck? <laughs> I've actually been listening to the Garland Ham Radio Club. Yeah. And it does seem like a very stale kind of group, but it's cool. You know, they just talk about their antennas and, and uh, their radios. Yeah, that's kind of boring. But anyways, it's kind of cool to... Um, to mess with that stuff in a way. Yeah. Right in the middle, they're talking. You always like have to hit the, the, the mic so it's. About to cut them off? Yes. Yeah. Mess with them. It, it, it doesn't cut them off, but it, it, they probably hear it. It usually sends out an audible tone like a poop. The shirt is too flimsy. Anyways. So I'm just going to use this bottle here to uh, hold my mic. No cap. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> so uh, we have a, a next fall or next, sorry, not next fall, way ahead of myself. Uh, probably next spring we'll be releasing a new series. Uh, it's going to be full of limited production cigars, mm -hmm. uh, one-off blends, stuff like that. With a but, gold foil. Yeah, absolutely. New bands going to be gold and all kinds of good. Yeah, it's going to be the shit. ones that we have limited supply of that are fantastic, but we can't mass produce in a sense. Yes, and the goal is what we're doing here is we're experimenting. A long-term experiment because what we will be doing after this one is probably next fall we'll be releasing like the Grand Poobah series of Cigars of Valor, which is going to be a blends that are exclusively made for Cigars of Valor. Like it's going to be stuff that we have hand picked. We told them what we want. Mm -hmm. They're going to make it for us. And um, so essentially these uh, cigars that are going to be limited production is we bought limited quantities of the tobacco. We're making these cigars. We're going to see what uh, our supporters think of them. And we're going to go from there. And whichever ones get the most feed, most positive feedback uh, will be eventually a mass production cigar. Yep. It'll be really cool. So that's uh, the mission for the next year. New Valor Pack's out. Yes. New Valor Pack. New, the x sample pack. Yep. We finally released all the x series. Mm -hmm. uh, they are now available. We came out with the sample pack, and we're also going to be working on a build-your-own sample pack. So if you want some from the concealment series and one from the expo series, you can build one. Mm -hmm. Need to get that done. Hmm? So I need to script all that. Yeah. <sighs> what else do we got going on? I feel like we had something else going on. We do, but, you know, I... Uh, I don't know. We forgot. What are you going to do? Um, doing another ride out with uh, our local police department. Really? Yeah. Nice. Uh, November. Cool. Mm -hmm. Should be like one of those citizens and ask if you should bring like body armor and Jesus. a machine gun and stuff like that. Yeah, those uh, those citizens are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Although I remember about, you remember about 10, 15 years ago, FBI picked up like a freaking sleeper cell over there off right behind Tom Thumb. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 
in Rowlett. Somewhere over there, yeah. That's hilarious. It's amazing where they end up. Jeez. But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we hung out at El Dorado Wednesday? Wednesday, yes. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, drank a little bit and we became uh, a nuisance, a public pretty nuisance. Pretty annoying. Like we were trolling people pretty hard. <laughs> Don't include me in this. Yeah, yeah, I was sober and I was doing that. So. You were just as bad. Yeah, I know. But uh, it was fun. It was funny. It was fun. So we're probably going to have some people on in the next couple episodes. We'll release exclusive ones that we're going to do with shop owners. And, uh, I think we're, we're trying to plan it for next week that we're going to go for El Dorado, right? Yeah, we're going to try and interview the owner of El Dorado. Yeah, and then when there was another guy, too. The one that runs the McKinney? Yeah, his manager. The yeah. one that, uh, the manager of the McKinney location. <clears throat> we will try to get them uh, on here so we can interview them and uh, just give you a perspective of what it's like to own or operate a brick and mortar cigar shop. Yep. That's pretty fun. Absolutely. So, we've been honestly thinking about how we're going to expand the podcast and how far we want to go on certain things. We don't want to introduce politics in anything because politics suck and uh, all that does is just mess with people. So, um, we're going to try out a couple different things throughout the next few series just to try to gain our traction. Yes, gain what we're going to talk about. Because, I mean, you can only talk so much about Cigars of Valor that you got to sort of include other content. Yes. Um, what, there is one thing I wanted to talk about uh, that I saw happen. Uh, apparently, I guess October 16th or 17th, someone... Uh, vandalized five Plano police squad cars at really? one of their substations. Uh, broke out windows, stole all the camera equipment out of the trunk. How does that even happen? I don't know, but that just shows you the lack of respect that people have now towards so that being said, we're creating a militia. I'm just yeah. kidding. But it just, it's, it's so disappointing that people have such, lack, uh, such a lack of respect for law enforcement. Uh, when we were younger, yeah, we would never have thought about or thought of doing something like that ever. It was just like when I was talking the other day with uh, people speeding in Rowlett on 66, like doing like an 80 and a 50. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I remember I grew up in Rowlett for eight, 18 years before I kind of moved away. And I mean, I lived in Rowlett probably 22 years, you know, like for a while. Yeah. And yeah. Things there, and it's not the cops fault. It's, it's like, not. let's just get that out of the way. It's, it's not, not the police officer's fault. They're understaffed. And it's, it, it really is a, it's just a, a problem in society. It really too. is. It's, it's there's, a, there's no respect for law enforcement anymore. And it's no respect for anyone else's safety. either. And, and just because you respect law enforcement doesn't mean that you have to tolerate like corruption or something. Like some cops are bad and everyone knows that every good cop knows there's a yeah, bad There's cop. bad apples in every profession. Yeah. Every single one. It just happens that the bad ones in law enforcement get the spotlight. Yeah. It's just, it's insane that, that people drive just endlessly, recklessly, like running red lights, oh, it's doing insane. 40 over. And, you know, I'm, I'm driving and I'm like, shit, if I did that, I'd be pulled over and thrown in jail, you know, like, and I would expect that. Yeah. I would expect that to happen. It's but, just, but it, like you said, it's not the officer's fault. They're yeah. super short staffed right they, they now. They can't do anything. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked to plenty of cops, and they're like, "Yeah, we wish we could." But if, like, for example, um, let's say you're super, you're running at minimum for that shift. Like, you have a set, certain set of minimum, you have a minimum amount of officers you need to operate on each shift. And uh, let's say, for example, you have six, and let's say a good majority of them are tied up on calls. Well, you can't go off and get on traffic stops 
Because what if one of those officers calls for, you know, assistance or what if there's another call that pops up? You don't want the whole shift tied up on individual things where no one can be available to run calls. So it's, if, yeah, that's just, that. that's the issue right now. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that was a thing for a while in Dallas. Um, they were understaffed. Was it like a few thousand officers? It was bad. Very bad. Something like that. And I, I mean, you could, it, Dallas was like, but they took, uh, it, it was so bad that they, what was it, like three hours for a priority one call? Uh, yeah, there was uh, three it was hours. insane. Months. Like, that shouldn't be a thing. Like, why? I don't understand. I mean, everyone knows. Everyone knows it's already. But, like, you, everyone, like, uh, any logical reason, you shouldn't understand why the city wouldn't bring on extra officers or ask for help or mm -hmm. something, you know? None of that. But... Yeah, but also another reason why these uh, departments are having such a hard time filling spots is because they have a lack of support from the city council in a lot of a lot of cities, Florida and is. also just uh, no one wants to deal with that. Uh, look at what officers are going through right now as far as being targeted. Mm -hmm. uh, they get no support, like I said, from the city council or from their own agency. Sometimes I mean, yep. And if they do anything. Yeah, you know they have to watch their back constantly, and if they do anything wrong, they're immediately fired. Absolutely, and thrown so, in jail. So I mean, come on! I mean, you want to defund the police and then bitch because your crime skyrockets. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let society collapse because the only people that are going to survive are the people that wanted a peaceful environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am getting pretty far. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, they, you know, soon enough, like, not even the city council people are going to feel safe because it's it's going to it's it's going to be so bad that you know. So, like, I work in Rowlett, so I've noticed homeless people walking through my work parking lot, looking through cars. Three years ago, it wasn't like that. Like, you never really saw that. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that two years ago. It's like recently too. And like we said, it's not the cops' fault. It's not. It's just, it, there's an allowance of crime. And when people are allowed to break the law, they continue to do it. Absolutely. And they do worse. When they realize there's no repercussions or yeah. anything for what they do, they just gonna keep doing it. I mean, what the, I mean, you've seen a, like a big influx of beggars in Rowlett too. They yeah. used to never be a thing. It was like the weirdest thing to see that, you know? Yeah, well, they, uh, they recently ruled it that it's uh, protected by their First Amendment uh, the First Amendment to panhandle. Panhandling is now protected by the First Amendment. So they, no cities argued that. I don't. I, don't know. I just I was reading that that it's protected by the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. But panhandling, I don't know what the actual definition of panhandling is. I'm sure it's holding up a sign or displaying some sort of sign at a street corner. But I want to go back in history a little bit when the city of Garwin told the Shriners that they could not ask for donations at this at the corner. They said that was panhandling. They couldn't do it. But now, magically, it's protected by the First Amendment. Amazing. When the Shriners were trying to uh, generate funds to help children that have been burnt severely. So when they got ticketed for that, did they ever get in trouble? They were, they were just told to stop doing it. I was going to say, could they ask for a refund now? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just times are changing, and uh, yeah. it's now becoming the norm to break the law yeah. and get away with it. As Ooh, long as you, I've noticed, though, uh, like as long as it's not something severe, that's. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut on that one. Yeah, well, you, you saw what happened recently in Chicago. Yeah. The law, I mean, you're allowed to do second-degree murder. It's insane. It's like a misdemeanor now. Yeah, there's, they're doing it up in New York, too. Uh, well, I hope those cities enjoy their... Uh, they uh, enjoy the fruits of their labor. Absolutely. But it's... I don't <coughs> know if, Sorry. Anyone in their right mind who would pass that law? I mean, it's, it's obvious. Like, 
from it's the obvious begin- from the why. beginning. You know, it, like you probably can't say because this video will get destroyed. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's obvious. It's it's, it's obvious, obvious who these people work for and what they're trying to do. Like mm-hmm. that's there you go. We won't get. We're going to leave it too that. far into that, yeah. but I, everyone knows this now. Absolutely, it's obvious. Yeah. And if you if you don't see that, then uh, very blind. Yeah, crawl out from underneath the rock. Because I mean, there's no way that the majority of people support that. There's no way. No, uh, there's no who, way the majority what sane of society person would support that. Would, yeah, would support something like that. There's no reason. So it's kind of obvious. But then again, you know, it's on. Very good. It is what it is. It's what it is. It is. But we're going to move on to a positive note. Gun range. We've been saying that like last four. Podcasts. I know, but like I said, <laughs> the gun range. Last week, uh, I said that I'm going to keep saying it until we go. Uh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Bob wants to go. By the way. Let's go. Let's yeah, we need to. Fucking go. He's, I think he's going out of town, though. Of course. For like three months. Why would you? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Yo, he wants to go to the gun range. Oh, it'll be three months later. Yeah, he's going to the Philippines for three months. And he's like, I don't know. I may not come back. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> That's weird. If you enjoy that, sure. Yeah. <sighs> Um, so I think what we need to do is we need, I I got a list of a few cigar shops in Fort Worth that I want to go visit. Yeah. And uh, we didn't, we want to try getting the shelves. Um, but there's one thing I want to address is the issues regarding getting boxes made and trays made um yeah we're gonna have to do this ourselves yeah we bought we're buying the equipment to make our own boxes because we're just so tired of uh i understand the cost of materials is skyrocket i understand but um i mean every company needs to make like 30x though like i don't that's the thing though like what was the how much were the boxes like each oh uh, i don't have my phone on me but it was what when we originally ordered the first batch of 25 it was like 500 something dollars for 25 boxes and yes that's insanely expensive but it was made here in america yeah and well we can make it here in america absolutely for like 30 bucks yeah <laughs> so. and then uh this year i tried placing another order 800 something dollars yeah. for the same amount. And I'm not calling the company out. I'm not bashing them. I understand cost of materials has gone up. Just we're a brand new company. We yeah. can't really, we can't do that right now. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to push out $800. I mean, that's, I mean, we'd have to sell a substantial amount of cigars to yeah. be able just to buy that. Yeah, so we're just going to make them ourselves and uh, we'll go from there. We're good at it. We decided that we're just going to put these ammo cans in every store, let it rust and. Yeah. Yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that's a good way to lose every cigar shop. <laughs> every cigar in here tastes like iron. <sighs> yeah. So, what else are we going to talk about? You got any funny uh, non-exposing where you worked? You got any funny stories? No, I do have. It's not a funny story, but I will share a story that sheds some light on the human trafficking issue that we have going on in the world right now. I've told you this story. Yeah, I know. But I'm not. So one night, I uh, got a call about it's 9 30 at night mind you and um i'm not going to disclose where exactly i worked due to a possible deniability yeah just don't even yeah. mention any, any type of location yeah so i get a call 
nine thirty at night, and uh, the call states uh, there's people going door to door trying to sell Reliant Energy. Pretty, at nine thirty at, at nine thirty at night. Yeah, out where I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine. And uh, so I respond, and uh, the description of the vehicle was a white cargo van, white passenger van. Uh, white Chevy Express passenger van. And Not the Cigars of Valor van, by the way. No. And for those of you that have seen that van, anyways, so it was a white passenger van, Chevy Express passenger van, that was a description of the vehicle. And uh, got behind it at an intersection, and uh, he failed to signal turning onto a main road, main thoroughway through the area. And so I initiated a traffic stop. And we pulled into the gas station and uh, I make contact with the driver. I'm very professional. Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. But this is the reason you're stopped. You have a driver's license, proof of insurance. He provided uh, a Ohio driver's license. And the license plate on the van came back. To, it was a Kansas license plate. So there's two little yellow flags there. And so when I look in the back, because uh, it's a passenger van. The back seats are open. You can visibly see back there. And there's, I want to say it was like six or seven young females in the back. Uh, so I uh, asked the driver out of the vehicle and just to get his story why he's trying to go door to door selling energy at 930 at night out in the middle of nowhere. And... Uh, he told me that he works for Reliant Energy. He's coming down from Kansas. Yeah, he's coming down from Kansas, and uh, the the young ladies in the back are new hires. They just hired him. So I asked, "How old are they?" And he could not tell me how old they were. And uh, I said, "Do you not think they look a little young to be selling energy at nine thirty at night?" He said, oh, "I didn't think about that." Okay, so I went and uh, I, I went ahead and called for another another unit, and then he came and uh, watched the driver, and I asked the the other officer to go ahead and do a a twenty seven twenty nine check, which is a check for warrant, warrants and all that good stuff. Um, at that point, we determined that he had a I want to say it's a felony warrant, you know, a felony warrant out of Ohio where he's from, so. We got him on that. We went ahead and placed him under arrest and put him in the back of the patrol car. So I started talking to these young females, seeing where they're from. One was from like Nebraska. One was from Kentucky. Two were from Ohio. They were just all scattered all over. And I asked, how did you wind up here? And all had a similar story. They were out walking around. They had just gotten in a fight with their parents, so they are out walking. This guy comes by, says, hey, you want a job? I got a job for you. It's selling energy uh, down in Texas. And uh, they said, sure, yeah. So they hopped on board, and there they go. Well, upon further investigation, uh, it turns out four of the six were reported missing, and uh, the other two just hadn't been reported yet. And... Uh, so that really opened some stuff up. And so a little thing is a, we did a border crossings check so we can run your 28 and check for a border. How many times you cross the border mm-hmm. in Texas, from Texas to Mexico. And he had already, this was May of that certain year. And he had already crossed the border 32 times. Damn. Yeah. And uh, when we, I remember vividly that uh, we called the parents of one of the children. Uh, they were obviously from the northern states. Advised her parents that we had her child down here in Texas and they lost it. Like, they could not believe how their daughter got from that state to Texas that quick. Yeah driving yeah and i asked those girls when did he pick you up and each one of them said within the past 
like within the past day he picked them up. Yeah. So just be so aware. What, what was he going to do driving across the border with them, just in case somebody probably didn't realize this? So generally what happens is they drive down to the border and uh, they'll drive into Mexico and they'll sell them into traffic. Into traffic. As they get paid per head. It's awful stuff. Awful. And it's a very real issue. And, uh, you know, all, all we can say to that <clears throat> is it's extremely, I mean, you can't even describe probably what that does to the mental health of law enforcement. Yeah, it's tough. Man. So that's, uh, at, at the same time, it's a, it was a very rewarding feeling knowing that we possibly saved these young girls yeah. uh, from going down there. But and at the same time, it's also like, holy shit. Yeah. That's how real it is. Yeah. And it's not one guy doing it. It's thousands. It's God knows how many. You know, it, 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 it's sad. And it's a world we live in. And if only we could make it get better. You know, deep down inside, you kind of feel like it's never going to change. Absolutely. But you, know, you can only hope that, um, you know, things will be done about it. There is good people, though, that do work on that in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And so that's good that somebody can do things about that. I actually thought one day that we should try to donate to uh, different groups to help with that. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be yes. something that we would dream of, you know, seeing if we can help in yes. some way. But uh, I'll go back to your original topic. You wanted a, I guess, a funny or something stupid, like a story. Is that what you're asking? Oh, like with you? Yeah, with a previous job. Hmm. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, just thinking. Yeah. But what what sort of funny law enforcement stories do you have? Um. Let me roll through my. Hard drive, real quick. I don't know if the uh, the one with the guy. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's a little dark. <laughs> I I don't know. Just we leave that one alone. That. That's a that's maybe, a story. Maybe you can uh, PG that that story. Just don't describe the gore. Just describe the story because it's hilarious. It's actually. just all right. It's so bad. It's hilarious. <sighs> oh man. Okay, so had a guy. He'd. Uh, no longer want to pursue life mm -hmm. in his current body. So he attempted to end it himself with a firearm. <laughs> it didn't work. He and used his toe on the end of the shotgun. He used his toe to pull the trigger and it didn't work. And, and uh, he slipped, fired it, and fired it hit it. him, but the gun slipped. So. Yes. So you can imagine what that did to the bottom of his face. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> We gotta say it like that. <laughs> and uh, oh, so he gets. We obviously he goes to the hospital. They end up transporting him down to a major trauma center, and uh, where he can also also get some constructive surgery done. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, I guess he got fed up again and threw a chair out the window. Keep in mind, he's on the second floor of this hospital and jumps out the second story window trying to again end it doesn't work breaks his legs and suddenly he wants to live and suddenly he wants to live <laughs> man That's some luck right there I'm sure some people are going to get offended by that story but oh well Fuck off. I don't think any of the people that would even listen to us. So who cares? Yeah, I know. Um, I can disclose some pranks that I used to, we used to pull on each other in the job. Okay. Uh, one of the big things was we had take home cars. So we would uh, go get into the other officer's car and put a traffic cone and prop it up against the back barrier. 
in a way. So whenever you start driving and hit the brakes, it would fly forward and smack up against <laughs> the barrier and just get the shit out of them. <laughs> yeah. Or we would uh, get in their car, turn it on another radio station, turn the volume all the way up, and then turn it off and get out. <laughs> like turn off the car and get back out. So when he'd start a shift the next day, he'd turn the car on and what a surprise. Or we'd do it with his lights and we'd turn the lights on and hit the siren. So when he turns on his car the next day, he's welcomed by a, 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 a quite a bit of sound. It's awesome. <sighs> So I'm sure every job, especially military, firefighters, law enforcement, we all, when you get hired on as the new guy or the greenhorn, you go through some sort of hazing or initiation. It's just part of it. it it's Clint Emerson stated that if you don't go through some sort of hazing by your peers, they don't give a shit about you. Them, show, them hazing you and initiating you, just showing them that, okay, we can this guy, we can welcome him in. So my initiation was I uh, went to a another officer's house and there was a quite a few other officers there. And I was just told it was gonna be a you know a beer thing, we'll get together. We're just gonna get together, drink some beer and s- smoke cigars, hang out. Well, I didn't know what I was walking into. Um <laughs> I guess he had watched Animal House at a prior date because he uh, made me put on the Viking helmet and I had to chug uh, uh, it was like I want to say two or three of the big big beer glasses and um, but it was what they would do is they'd take a shot of Jack pour it in the bottom and fill it up with beer and so I had to chug three of those and I couldn't throw up. I couldn't, sp- I couldn't stop, couldn't spit, get nothing. I had to do it all. I think all control. No, <laughs> I was off the next three days after that. And, uh, thankfully I did it without an issue. And, uh, I felt like dog shit the rest of the night and the rest of the next day. But I would like to hear some initiation stories like that, if you were willing to share them, anyone that's in law enforcement, firefighter, military, any sort of public service like that, I'd like to hear your initiation stories. Yeah, share in the comments. Yeah, feel free to share. Maybe actually put a comment in the comments and uh, you know, maybe we'll get one, one for the first time. Yes, and if you don't want to share it openly, feel free to just message us. It'll be confidential. We won't, I just want to hear it because that shit's funny. Yeah. Yeah, there's stories, too, that if they want to share that we can talk about. Yeah, absolutely. We would do it. Yeah. If you want to share about anything, really. You know, I was going to say, why don't you show a couple of the challenge coins that we got on the one year? Gladly. So we had a few guests down for our one year anniversary party. Uh, Sergeant. So what? Is this one? Yeah. yeah, that's a Maryland State Police. Uh, they provided us with this awesome challenge coin of their aviation regiment. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's those challenge coins we got were awesome. And then I got one here from the A-10 Warhog demonstration team. Uh, demonstration Pretty cool. And then my... One of my favorites is one from the Texas DPS gang unit. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Uh, So I just want to thank everyone that's provided us with these badass challenge points. Yeah, I didn't realize how cool these are. Like, you know, I I have one of the B-29 that my grandpa got. Mm -hmm. And it's cool, but I didn't know they do them like this. You know, like it's... I guess it's a difference between, you know, 1940 something yeah. or 1950, it's you know, changed. versus not, I mean, now. I'm not saying it's changed for the worse or better. It's, uh, like the 
I would call it currency between the trades. Yeah. Uh, and it's changed. It's not that. Like law enforcement used to be patches. You would swap patches, with, which I have Notice. a lot of. You have a ton over there. Yeah, just over there. You should see the box I have in the other room. Jeez. Yeah, it's just not a lot of them. And uh, we're, we're welcome to more. Uh, or we're open to more, sorry. If you want to send us some challenge coins or some patches, feel free to mm-hmm. we'll make Yeah, we'll put them up on the display. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're going to eventually have a big display back behind us with the patches and challenge coins and all that. Be cool. That, that's what we're going to try to do. But we just need more of them. Yep, we're starting out. And, <clears throat> you know, we're only like, what? Is this like the fifth? Is this the fifth one? Yeah, we'll say it's the fifth one. Podcast? Yeah, so and we're only five podcasts in. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we've adapted quite a bit on it, so that's pretty good. Absolutely. We have come a long way since number one. Yeah. I was going to post the uh, number one video, and I saw it, and I was looking, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this looks like no, shit. No, don't post <laughs> Like, that. it was. Don't post that. He does. It's funny. But, uh, I mean, that's what a lot of the YouTuber guys have said. They were like, they're like, I can't even go back and watch my first videos, mm-hmm. you know, because like how different it is. It's funny. <laughs> that changes the barometric pressure of the room. I can only hope. So, last week we talked about our dreams of opening a cigar shop. Well, week before, right? Was it the week before? In the past, whatever, we talked about opening a cigar shop. Damn it. Wow. So I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Piece of shit. There, it's nice again. Nope. Nope. Yeah, so we talked about opening a cigar shop and uh, whenever he's done blowing the fucking table mat. That sounds really bad. Didn't it? Yep. And uh, I think when we do open it, we're going to have a big, obviously, we're going to have a big grand opening party. And we're going to have some people out there, like or some of our Instagram uh, promoters, where they're going to be out there. I think one shot, he'll come out. Sergeant Smokey, who will obviously be invited to come out. Uh, You're talking but, really close. Am I talking really close? Sorry, I didn't realize how. And I was like, close. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that, <laughs> that. Well, I can't put it on my fucking shirt. Okay, well, just like keep it near Some your mouth. Bitch. But you're, you're, like, you're deep throating it. You never heard those people on like Call of Duty where it sounds like. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, pinch your shirt and put it on. Jesus Christ. God. All right. So, whoever designed these little clips, find them and bring them here. All right. There we go. That was, Why is it so difficult? Because <laughs> I'm stupid. I wasn't implying that, but sure. But I. <coughs> COVID. Oh shit, we're not supposed to say that. I forgot about that. Well, maybe it didn't hear you. But so we're going to have a big grand opening party, and anyone that appreciates this podcast or appreciates Cigars of Valor, you're more than welcome to come out. We're going to have some awesome deals going. It's going to be a good time. Have some live music. Um, that's, we're really excited about opening a cigar shop, if you couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. And it might be coming soon. Yep, we're trying. Might be. Some way will be provided. Mm-hmm. Uh. You know, let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. What's our next event at Fuego? Hmm. When are we going to do an event 
like at a different Inflego store. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring that up. Send in one of the agents. Yeah. Send in one of the guys. Um, what's, uh, we're going to put our hearts and minds to the expansion of Cigars of Valor. Let's, uh, I know of two, at least two cigar shops in Fort Worth I want to go talk to. And maybe we can get some events set up with them. Yep. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fort Worth, that's a big, a town is filled with people that would are support, on our page. That would support us. Yes. In a sense. Yes. And we're going to try and talk to Abilene and Wichita Falls. We're going to spread out. Well, there's something out in East Texas you wanted to look at. Uh, there was a, I thought there was a shop in Paris, but apparently he hasn't opened yet. That was like a year ago. Yeah, I was told he had opened, and I was hearing from other people he hasn't opened yet. There ain't no way. No. And anyone that watches this podcast, if you come out to one of our events, I will give you a cigar. Yeah. Just mention that you watched the podcast. And know when we get like thousands of views, the offer's off at that point. Okay. Can't yeah, do that. We're not going to give up thousands of free cigars to go broke. Yeah. But yes, limited time, we will give you a cigar. Yes. So remember that. Just mention code HFY11517131474. Seven, eight. Capital Z. What was that code again? I don't know. Play the video back. That's it. But if you mention that code, get a free cigar. Someone's going to memorize it now. Just put it on the bottle. Just don't, I will put it on the bottle. Just don't I'm going to. Wrap your lips around it. Shut up. So, yeah. Um... Let's see. Uh, what else? Speaking of harassment, you know who we need to harass? A lot of people. A lot of people. That's all I have to say. Oh. I thought there was going to be more to that. Yes. Um, you know, I wonder if that guy in Germany ever got those cigars. I know he did. <laughs> I know it took like three weeks to get yeah. there, even with like priority or something. Yeah, we've actually sent some cigars overseas. Yeah. That's quite a feeling. You know, it'd be fun one day if we can get a C-130 and airdrop them to the troops wherever we're at now. You know how expensive <laughs> that would be. I mean, it would only cost probably like. Have you ever seen how much it costs an hour to operate a C-130? Yeah, I know. I was going to say it's close to probably a million dollars to do something like that. Not an hour. No, not an hour. No, that's what it's The whole operation. Fuck. Maybe. That's probably even undercut. Right? I'll tell you what, though. We'll just launch a space shuttle, take them into space, and then uh, when they dip out of the atmosphere, they'll throw them out the window. And if they don't disintegrate, you get cigars. You know, the idea of that adjustment to that theory was to make it more financially feasible it and went from one went, million dollars to about one billion dollars. yeah you went the opposite direction on that <laughs> so uh, no uh obviously we're open to giving our cigars to military as well uh, if, if you're a uh, prior service feel yeah. free to reach out and we'd love to talk to you we'd love to Speak with you, smoke a cigar, and just ask you about your service and thank you for it. And we want people on the podcast. See, we're boring. So if we could get extra people on the podcast to hang out with us and talk and talk about their things, you know, nothing is insignificant in your uh, deployment time. So don't don't feel like uh, that, you know, you're not worthy of, of talking to a couple people, you know, yeah. so it's... We'd love to have people on. Absolutely. So yeah. it's, just, it's just a matter of uh, sending us a message and we'll be like, yeah, I'm out. 
Yeah, you know, we, we normally record these on uh, the evening of Friday, so that's uh, I'm sure they got time. Absolutely. Uh, we just want to say thank you. Yeah. We want to smoke a cigar with you. It's the least we could do. Yep. Uh, we'll let you discharge a firearm in city limits. No. Under your discretion. Because I don't want anyone getting in trouble. <laughs> Not really. It's good. But if you ever want to go to the gun range, feel free to let us know. We'll go mm-hmm. to the gun range because I would like to go to the gun range. Someone take him to the gun range, please. You need to go too. Yeah, I know. I want to go. I want to shoot my AR. I haven't shot in a while. I have a H and K USB forty five tactical that I absolutely I love shooting that gun. It, it's amazing. How many times have you shot that? I, I, let me check my log real quick. I don't know. I don't know. You've been to, I've been to the range once with my AR. I've shot it quite a few times. Uh, but I also uh, got a. Uh, I bought Nicole, my girlfriend, a, a Mossberg Shockwave a few months ago uh, because she's been wanting one. And uh, we need to go uh, find an outdoor range somewhere so we can have some fun. You know, if you post your address on Craigslist, you probably could test early. <laughs> Please come on by. Door's open. What do you think of that cigar? What do you think of the writer? It's beautiful. It's a delicious cigar. This is in the top tier. Absolutely. This is definitely in the top. I like the one year, and then honestly, I think I like this next. Yeah. Like it is, and for a while, this was my favorite. Mm-hmm. So it's just damn good cigar. We have picture the espionage, but stronger. Mm-hmm. If you, if I were to use the word strong. Deeper flavors. Yeah, the flavor is way more intense. Way more enhanced flavor profile. There we go. My vernacular is shit. Why don't you read a book? I do read a book. You know, I don't every read, I don't read I books. read books every night. I don't read books. By the way, I've been reading Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. Fantastic book. Extremely gruesome and dark, but such a good book. What's it about? Um, it's about a kid that runs away from home. Uh, he's from Tennessee. He runs away, comes down to Texas, joins up with the Glanton gang, and they go around killing and pillaging. And, but uh, this kid has a strand of good in him and decides, I'm not going to do this, uh, and takes off after the Glanton gang is slaughtered. What, what year? Uh, Mid-1800s. Hmm. Fantastic. So they just run around and kill people? Yeah, they were going after the Native Americans and uh, Hispanic and Mexicans. Oh. And, uh, uh, but believe me, karma comes back around to him. Good. Uh, but there's this character in there named Judge Holden. If there was a cut character in a book that was the definition of evil, that's it. Hmm. Yeah, he is wicked. You know, I, I do wish that we... Because, you know, you see modern times now, it's starting to kind of get lawless like that again. Yep. You know, not, not nearly as bad, but I mean, there's a lot more people in the world. The uh, I, honestly, like the kind of I, I wish I grew up. I was born in the 90s, 92. And you were 91, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I wish I was born in the 70s or 80s, you know, and kind of grew up in the earlier mm-hmm. times. Because, you know, you, you remember back when you were young, we were young. Um, Back in the 90s, it, you know, it was very peaceful. It was a simple time. Yeah. And we both grew up in Rowlett. I met him in second grade. And it was, it was a lot different. It was like during work hours. I remember my mom would like take me to the doctor or something like that. Yeah. And during like work hours, there was nobody on the road. It's no like one. a Saturday morning, yeah. you know, like 8 a.m. There's no one around. Your mom worked on Saturdays? No, no. I'm saying it's like a Saturday. Oh, okay. I'd say my mom worked on Saturday. She worked. That's when they have to give my parents is they both were very hard workers. Yeah. Your mom still works hard. She still works hard. What is she, uh, how many hours a day does she work? Like 10? Huh? How many hours a day does she work? Uh, she works 12 hour shifts. Oh my God. She's, like, she's been doing that like uh, forever. She's been in that profession for 30 years. Yeah. 
Damn. She is a hard worker. And my dad, he's the one that instilled uh, the work ethic in me. Uh, he, so thank you. Yeah. I, I did kind of get uh, sort of an entrepreneurial mind sh- uh, mindset from my parents. Yeah, that's what we grew up with. Yeah. Your dad, he owned his own business. Yep. Yeah, my dad owned his and own business. And my mom kind of owned her own stuff, too. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, we grew up with it. So that's why, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what led to starting this. Yeah, of course. Just, I mean, we talked about it. Like, yeah, we tried um, T-shirt businesses. Uh by far, the cigar thing is the most successful thing that yes, we've done. For absolutely, sure. it's not. It, it's not if you're going to fail; it's when you're going to fail, and you just got to be able to pick yourself back up and go at it again. Never give up. You know that most, um, like, millionaires didn't gain their wealth until their forties. That's usually what happens. So, don't give up hope on any of that if you ever had dreams of opening a business it's really not that difficult it just takes some time you know? yeah, and many many people feel like they're not worthy mm-hmm. to do that or they're not smart enough to do that or something don't ever feel like that yeah it's uh it takes a special type of person that uh wants to enrich in themselves versus getting someone else rich mm-hmm. so when you're working for someone you're making them money but if you start to try to do your own thing and, and work for yourself and you know we still work full time jobs and absolutely. Do this. So it's you know it's not it's not that bad. It just takes away from your free time in a bit. But we know yeah. that in five years or something like that we'll be good. You know we won't need we won't be working a job. We'll be doing this full time and donating and helping people. And that's kind of like a dream absolutely. that we've always had. Absolutely. So yeah. that's um. It just yeah. comes down to like I said, don't give up, never quit, uh, and also one piece of advice uh opening a business will humble you if you like it'll point out it, it'll bring out issues that you have and it'll make you fix them yeah it's true and if you're not willing to adapt or acknowledge that you everyone has flaws everyone does i don't care who you are everyone has flaws but you get you have to be a big enough person to acknowledge that and we have to also be a big enough person to try and fix it. I mean, and that's all you can do is try to fix it. Yep. It's uh, it's growth. Mm-hmm. It's growing progress. It takes, uh, and especially too, when you, when you start to have your own business and stuff, you don't really fit in anymore. Like society is a broken off piece of you, you know, and uh i know you experienced that in law enforcement itself you know that type of like break away from society absolutely that type of feeling you know and so entrepreneurship is like it's kind of the same in a sense like you sort of break off from people you know you have friends that want to go out and just drink all the time and yeah it gives you a different perspective and uh you know you're like well you know i'd rather i'd rather work on my business tonight Mm -hmm. i'd rather do something tonight you know to better myself because whenever you're successful you can go and drink all you want yeah you know, so it's a matter of just taking that time and it's the growth process that is time consuming and you need to, it's, it's time consuming. It's, you got to dedicate yourself, dedicate your life to it. Yep. It's not just going to be handed to you. Yeah. You, you got to work and it's sometimes it's harder work than a day job, like a full time job. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you, I'm used to paperwork for my previous job, but um, it's obvious opening a business, you're spending more time doing paperwork and actually having fun running your business. Yeah, it's not it's not really fun. Yeah. It's fun doing events, meeting uh, people. And- that's like the reason I love doing this shit is going to the events, meeting different people. Getting belligerent. Getting belligerent. Harassing. Harassing people. Uh, but they love it. Or yeah. they wouldn't buy our cigars. But, uh, it, you know, when we, f- we first started out, we were, we were selling cigars without labels, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. it's uh, like, I remember the first cigars that we sent to Juan didn't have labels on. Yeah. You know, so Absolutely. then we uh, worked in Photoshop and kind of put together different labels. 
and uh, we got a red one of these, and this is a OD green. It, you know, honestly, it didn't it didn't come out super OD green. It looks fine. You know, no yeah, one knows. People compliment the piss out of that. Yeah, though. and it, but it. it, you know, it wasn't the color that we intended. So I'm just saying that, like, don't don't feel like just because, you know, something doesn't work out right that it's not gonna that's not gonna work. You know, you kind of you just got to make do with what you got, mm -hmm. and and that that thing turned out fine. It wasn't the OD green. It's a little bit lighter, but it but it's okay. It's no one's complaining. Yeah. I have not heard one complaint about yeah, that. It just, it doesn't matter. So like some people, they want to perfect everything and they want everything to be perfect with it. And, you know, they want to have the qualities of a full scale business that's been out for 20 years. You know, you hear about yeah. Black Rifle Coffee and what they started in like 2014. Yeah. 2014. Look where they're at now. Yeah. And that was, uh, that was eight years ago. Yeah. But he worked hard at that. That yeah. was, they did. It was a team, but. They worked hard. Yeah, and you didn't really hear about their company until maybe a year ago when they kind of blew up. You and know, they like, started opening brick and mortars. Yeah. So it's just like you just got to stick with it for a while. And even though it may not feel like it's going anywhere, it really is. It's, it's getting into the minds of people. And we started the podcast so that we can engage with people better and that we can have a, uh, a community developed on this. Because, I mean, having a community behind it is one of the strongest things a business can have now. Absolutely. Is, is actually having a community of people that, you know, maybe can relate to us and, and enjoy what we talk about or uh, get the dark humor that sometimes we push in and yeah. enjoy the cause of the cigars. Yeah. And it's, like I said, we do it. Uh, it's, a, it's a passion. Uh, we're not doing it to get rich. If we get rich, that's a bonus. That's the byproduct of enjoying what you're doing. Absolutely. Is what that is. And so I love it. You know, it's hard work. Taxes aren't fun. You know, seeing yeah. what government takes the, from you, but it the is monthly it is. sales reports to the state. Yeah. The monthly sales reports. Yeah. So I would recommend not selling tobacco, to be honest, because there was a lot of extra crap that goes into that versus coming up with something else like, Let's say making your own body armor or something, you know, like. Yeah, but that one, that's stressful because if it fails. Yeah. Well, you don't have to make the ballistic plates, but you can make the, the, the carrier. Yeah, the carrier. Um, there was a guy that was doing that. I can't remember who it was, where he was like sewing all of them together and making them himself. Mm -hmm. And I remember for a long time, he didn't really. Uh, this was back in like 2013. I saw him. And he wasn't really getting anywhere. And then suddenly, like, he blew up, you know. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's a matter of just sticking and being consistent. Yeah. And that's what yields you the result. I also think exposure has a lot to do with it. Because people see your name for a prolonged period of time and they start recognizing it. They remember it. Say, oh, that company's been around a while. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. Um, like, the story of Padron cigars mm. um, is incredible. There's a video on YouTube about it, just how he started but with a small factory in uh, South Florida and uh, grew to the point where he bought a factory in Nicaragua. Or he has a factory down there. And the, his one of his original rollers, I think just recently, it, he worked all the way up to the recent, like past few years from when Padron started. It's it's incredible. You got to read that story, you know how they started. You know who I can see getting big one day, mm. the Nacogdoches tobacco. Oh, absolutely. So Nacogdoches, Texas, they're starting to grow tobacco down there. Yeah. So that, that cigar shop, and stuff. Like, it's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. I want to try it one day. He said that they tried to grow it this year, but they kind of started late. Yeah. And said he got a pretty some pretty big leaves out of it, but it wasn't the quality or something. Yeah, not a good priming. Yeah. Uh, it will probably take a year or two before I start getting some good quality leaves out of it. That'd be cool. I'd like to try one of those one day. Yeah, we're going to have to. be cool. But yeah, in life, just keep your head up. <clears throat> work towards being happy. It's easy to stay in negativity. Just work to separate yourself from negative stuff. And you'll be surprised how much your mental health actually increases. Absolutely. And uh, you have such a different outlook on everything. Yeah. It's incredible. Who's getting killed? <laughs> I don't know. Probably someone outside. Or smoke. <laughs>
bellowing out the cracks in the garage. I could only hope. <laughs> All right, you want to end it? Yeah. All right, well, thank you. Yep. We got that event coming up November 9th. November 9th. From um, 5 to 9, or 5 to 10. We say 9, but it always goes on till 10. I don't know. He stays late somehow. He's a wimp. <sighs> Gotta get my beauty rest. Mm. Well, I'm doing you new pairs. Um, from the Cigars of Valor studio, located in a small garage. We, uh, we appreciate everyone for your support, and uh, we wish we could do more, but we're doing the best we can for uh, fallen officers and helping out what we can and where we can and making friendships and really enjoy that. And so we really appreciate everyone's support with this and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yes. See you next time. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.